What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you are doing well. Stefan here from App Stuff. In today's video, we are going to be going over leak code problem number 344, how to reverse a string. So we're gonna start off with the problem description, go through some of the examples they give us, and then go over how to implement a solution with Swift. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it and take a look at the description of the problem. So they're basically asking us to write a function that reverses a string. The input they're gonna give us is an array of characters, and that actually makes our life easier in this situation. The tricky part of this is we have to do this by modifying the array in place with no extra memory. So we'll talk about what that means in just a second. Let's just go through the first example we see here. It's pretty straightforward. So imagine the string they give you is hello. It's going to be represented as this array of characters uh, where each individual item represents a letter in that string. So it's H-E-L-L-O and the output they want is simply that string in reverse, O-L-L-E-H. So the fact that they give this to us in an array makes our life easier because it gives us a way of accessing each individual item in the string through like some sort of indexing system where we can use a loop to go through and visit each individual item and perform some sort of action that's gonna help us reverse the string. So let's talk about how we're gonna solve this and sort of the technique that we're gonna to use to do so. So we're gonna use something called a two pointer technique, guys. So basically we're gonna create two variables that look at the beginning and the end of the array. And that's where they're gonna start off, okay? And then we're gonna utilize a while loop to converge those indices on each other. And at each iteration of the while loop, we're simply gonna swap the characters that exist at those particular indices. So that might sound like the most confusing thing you've ever heard in the world. Let's go ahead and just break it down really quick. So I'm gonna add some comments here in the leak code editor. You guys could be writing this out in Xcode, or if you, have, uh, you wanna do this on leak code, you could do that as well. Um, I believe leak code does require a uh, $35 a month subscription to get access to all their problems, but it's highly worth it if you're really trying to learn algorithms. So anyway, um, like I said, we're going to create two pointers, right? So we're going to have like I and J. I is going to start at zero. J starts at end of array. So in th this example, I would be starting at H and O would be, uh, J would be starting at O, right? The end of the array. And we're going to use a while loop and we are gonna, like I said, converge those indices on each other, right? So at once they start at the end, we're simply gonna swap the two things. So after our process in our first process of the loop is complete, our array would look like this. It would look like O, E, L, L, H, right? So we have simply swapped O and H. And then we are going to increase I by one and move it up to E and decrease J by one and move it back to L. And then we're gonna swap those two things. And then once they meet in the middle, we're just gonna stop because we know that we're completely done, right? So once I and J are equal to each other, we know that we can stop. So that's sort of the process there, guys. Once again, we're just using a loop and two pointers to perform some sort of action at each iteration, which in this case is gonna be swapping the values at those particular indices. So let's go ahead and code this out, okay? So we're gonna create I, which is zero, and J, which is equal to S dot count minus one. So in this case, J would be four. And then we're gonna say while I is less than J, then we can simply just swap the two things. And Swift has a really helpful helper function to help us do that. We could just say S dot swap at I J and I'm gonna print the array at each iteration of the loop so you guys can see what's happening step by step once we submit our solution. But the next step is we need to make sure that we change the values of our indices accordingly so that they are converging on each other. When I say converging, I mean getting closer together, right? So we need to increase the value of I and decrease the value of J until they meet in the middle and the loop will stop. That's what this condition is imposing here. It says I has to be less than J if you want me to keep going. So whenever I is equal to or greater than J, the loop is not gonna run anymore. So all we need to do is say I plus equals one, that's gonna increase I by one, and then J minus equals one, which will decrease J by one. And let's go ahead and run our problem, guys. So we can see that our solution passes, we get back the desired result. 
we haven't used any extra memory, right? We've mod successfully modified this array in place. So this is looking really good, but let's take a look at our print statements. So this is exactly what we would expect, right? So after the first iteration, we see O and H are swapped, but everything else is still in place. And then I goes to this point and J goes to this point. And then we swap those two things. So that's why L and E are swapped in the next um, print statement. And then once the two things meet in the middle, we're done, the loop stops, we're good to go. So that's a really, really good example of how to use the two pointer technique, guys, when you wanna start, um, when you wanna look at an array and look at two different things at each point in a loop that you're going through, right? So we wanna look at the start and the end, and then we wanna converge them step by step until the two things meet in the middle and we're done. So let's go ahead and just hit submit on this solution to see how good it is and if it passes all the test cases. So I deleted the print statement because that takes up a lot of time and memory. So this is actually a pretty good solution, right? It beats 83.78% of solutions from a time perspective and 53.59% of solutions from a memory perspective. So that's not bad, right? Um, let's run it again just to see if the values change. Ooh, see, check that out. That's really, really good, right? Some, so this leak code data isn't always super accurate, but this solution is faster than 95.7% of all other solutions and more memory efficient than 98% of all other solutions. So that is about as good as it's gonna get, right guys? So um, really quickly, you would be, uh, just to go over what not to do when you're solving this problem in an interview setting is don't just say return or just say S dot reversed, right? That's what's known as a tri trivial solution, and that doesn't demonstrate to an interviewer that you actually understand how to solve an algorithm. So um, what we did solves the algorithm with all of the constraints, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video and enjoyed the solution. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. Got a, a ton more of this stuff on the way. This is the first video of many to come in this Swift algorithm series. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.